All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to just kind of show you when when dealing with multiplying and talking about a border and you know touching somebody else's border on a bulletin board and stuff like that. When doing that, you need to look at kind of the area of the bulletin board. So when you want to when you want to find the area of a bulletin board, let's pretend I have an area of a bulletin board which is two by four, right? And if I wanted to find the area of a bulletin board, but if, it's, uh, if I said it's a two by four, then you would just simply multiply two times four and you know the answer would be eight, right? Now, let's say I kind of rewrote this bulletin board though into kind of different sections. And I said, instead of saying it's by four, it's by one section plus another section plus another section plus another section. So it's really broken up into four different sections. And then I said the other side was broken up into two sections as well. Now if I found out what is the area of each one of these sections, you would just multiply the length times which for each section, which is one, two. And then if you added up all those sections, you would get the area of eight, right? So I give you that example for what I want you guys to do. When you're multiplying, when you're multiplying two expressions by each other, what you're essentially doing is creating an area. All right? So what you notice is I have two terms here and I have three terms here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle. A rectangle that is divided into two terms and three terms. And this is just a way to organize it. You guys can multiply by doing distributive property. That's perfectly fine. This is a very, very easy way to organize it, Brooke, by looking at it. So what you do is, since I broke down one side into two terms, I can just write one term and then the other term. Then for the long side, I'll just write each term gets its own box. Sorry? So now, the next thing that I'm going to be looking into is now I just want to find the area of each box. All right, so w, so what I do is just do length times width. Rather than doing this, right, because isn't that what I'm doing? This times this produces the area, right? But that times that is kind of complicated to do at one time. So if I broke it up into smaller individual sections, can I just find the area of each one of these boxes and then add them all up to get the answer? Yes, right? So w times w squared is w cubed. w times negative t squared, tw, is going to be a negative 2tw squared. w times 4t squared w is 4t squared w. w squared times 2d squared is 2tw squared. 2t times negative 2tw is going to be a negative 4t squared w. And then 2t times 4t squared is going to be an 8t cubed. So all I did was for each box, I just took the length times the width, length times width, length times width, length times width, and I found the area of each one. Now why is it so important to use this method, or why is this method helpful? Well, I like using this method because when, remember you have to combine like terms, and if you guys were to apply distributive property, which is another method, which you multiply this times this, this times that, that times that, then you go this times this, this times this, this times that, and it works. But once you write your answer, you have this huge long answer, and then you've got to combine like terms and allow students to make mistakes. What's nice about this method is your like terms are usually in a diagonal with each other. Don't these have the same variable factors, t and w squared? Do these have the same variable factors, t squared w? Yeah. So when I write my answer, I have w cubed. What's negative t? What's negative 2t w squared plus 2t w squared? Yeah. Zero, so I don't even need to write it. Then I have negative 4t squared w plus 4t squared w, is it, which is zero. And then I just have plus 8t cubed. Done. Cool? Amazing.
There you go. All right. All I'd like you guys to do before lunch.